wonderful thing about spring being in the air is it means the return of some very familiar faces. In this case, our pale morph Wahlberg's eagles have returned from their inter-African migratory flight right back to the exact same position that they always occupy year after year. And what's amazing about this particular pair is that both of them are pale morph Warburg's eagles, which sort of stands to reason that their next set of chicks will most likely be a pale morph Warburg combination. Now, so sort of roughly 5 to 10 percent of Warburg's eagles have this pale, almost sort of light grey colouring to them. There you go, there's the nest site that they use. Isn't that incredible? Year after year after year, they return to exactly the same spot. The same pair to the same nest, despite their hundreds of miles that they travel each and every single year. This could be the male or the female. It's hard to tell unless you've got them right up next to each other. The female, of course, is the larger of the two in almost all cases with birds of prey. I'm going to suggest that this is the female sitting in the nest, that she might have decided to start sort of sorting it out, might have deteriorated in her absence from it. Isn't she beautiful? Yes, you, with your little crest sticking up at the top. So for those of you who are budding birders and learning the different eagles, the Wahlbergs have a very slight crest to the top of their head. They're a small eagle, a tiny little eagle in comparison to something like a tawny or say a steppe eagle. Well, we might be seeing our steppe eagles at some point in the future. But the Wahlbergs are usually one of our earliest returnees and it is so lovely to see them once again on a road called Wahlbergs Road because, as, as you know, it's where the nest is, hence the name Wahlberg's Road. Wahlberg's, I believe, was a Swedish, Swedish, I think he was Swedish, sounds Swedish, Swedish biologist. That's where the name Wahlberg's Eagle comes from. I'm sure Brent will be able to tell us more when he returns from his birthday reading of the book of Latin names that I gave him for his birthday. <laughs> They really are lovely. The standard, oh, <laughs> duck, duck and cover. It's just a, a very brief mobbing by a fork-tailed drongo who kind of, that was so half-hearted. This is a little sort of semi-dive at the Wahlbergs. Not really committed to anything. It was more just a little for the show of it or a statement. Yes, exactly, Wahlbergs. It was very rude. There you go, you can see the crest that I was talking about and the lovely pale color. Well, this one's looking a little bit dirty. I don't know if it's the light. They are, of course, mottled in the front, but this one looks a little bit like it could do with some clean, cleaning. Dark brown eyes. For those of you learning your different birds, Warburgs have dark eyes. All of them have dark eyes, including these pale morphs. You also get a dark morph of Warburgs eagle which, as the name suggests, funnily enough, is the opposite of a pale morph Warburg's eagle, just in case that needed any clarification. There's a pair of them. There's one pale morph and one dark morph that used to nest at Red Dam, so hopefully they will decide to return this year as well. So a lovely surprise. We've seen these, these guys mating before, and hopefully we'll be able to watch them raise their chicks. Lovely question coming through from Michael, which was how common is it to have sort of different color morphs in each in a pair and how long do they live? I don't know how long they live. That, sorry, just to put that out there. I'm, I was going to suggest somewhere into their teens. Generally birds of prey are very, very long lived animals, possibly even up to their 20s. Those of you who perhaps have a better idea as to how long a Wahlberg's eagle might live, I'd love to hear if you've got an answer to that. In terms of the, the morph coloration, there's about, as I said, five to 10%, probably a little bit higher in this area, so closer to 10% pale morph. And then, oh, he's off. Early morning breakfast. And, oh, <laughs> did 
That was a brave decision. <laughs> well done, Chandre. I don't know. Did it catch something? <clears throat> I mean, because that was bizarre. That was like a... The court... Oh, I think it has. It has. Oh, no. It's... Oh, it's nest building. All right. Well, that explains that very peculiar decision to go diving into a quarry bush. Oh, look at that. That's awesome. How magic is that? Nest material gathering. I wondered why it went and chose the worst possible bush that was never going to properly support its weight. <laughs> that was very, very cool. So it's like what we saw the Shikras doing the other day, actually physically breaking off the branches and laying them on the nest. Rather than, you know, our little weaver species or anything like that, they often just gather stuff off the ground, although weavers do s strip away bits of palm leaf and so on. But these big birds of prey have got the strength and the dexterity to physically gather it. That's so interesting because I've never seen the inside of a Warburg's nest. And clearly they utilize things like that quarry branch that it just flew past with as a nice soft padding. Because as you, I mean, if you look at that nest, it's that messy bundle of thorny sticks. It doesn't look very comfortable. Sarah, I agree. I was just thinking the exact same thing, watching them line their nest, that a nest cam would be absolutely lovely. They are such gorgeous birds. We don't think, if I remember correctly, we don't think that they were successful last year in terms of raising a brood. We never, we never saw a juvenile or, or even um, little heads poking their, themselves over the top of the nest. No, don't quite know why they weren't successful, but a nest cam would be lovely. We're going back again. Please go back into the quarry bush. That was hilarious. It's going, it's going, it's going. Oh, yes. That's awesome. That was a much better landing. Oh, I hope you're getting some amazing screenshots because this is so awesome. I wish I had a camera. Look what you got. You clever thing. <laughs> Sorry, Michael. I realize I didn't actually finish answering your question properly. But this is just too fascinating for words. Oh, Chandra, awesome. How amazing. The skill of our cameraman, just by the way. Well done. That one's a bit smaller than the last one you got. I think you're... Your mate's going to be a bit disappointed. You setting set the standards a bit too high the first time round. Maybe it's finishing touches. I suppose it takes all kinds sizes of guari branch to make a nest. Whoop! Run, run, run! <laughs> Trying to figure out a way to get it onto the nest. A very valid point from Susan, something that we often forget, or I often forget, I shouldn't say we, I often forget, is that it's very difficult to get a sense of scale in terms of the size of these birds. Oh, sorry, just look at the way it's walking along. What now? Your nest is that way. Go on. Go back. <laughs> I'm loving this. So, Susan, very good point. We often sort of don't give you a sense of scale. I'm looking for an exact size so that I can give you an exact size. I'm trying to think of a... Oh, this is perfect. I'm trying to think of a nice comparative thing. For some reason, my brain never works in terms of size comparisons, and I end up with the most bizarre thoughts going through my head. They're tiny. So I've got, I mean, in terms of exact, rough exact height, you're looking at about 60 centimeters, which is, what is that? That's about roughly 25 inches in terms of height. No, that's not right. No, that is right. It's close to. So roughly 25 inches in height. I'll give you an indication with my hand. They're about as long as my forearm, give or take. Look at that. 
and putting them in the nest is awesome. Yeah, so roughly from my elbow to the tip of my fingers is about the size, maybe a little bit less, but you know, no, that would be about right. It's about as tall as they are. And wingspan you're probably looking at just over a meter, whereas a lot of our eagles go right up over two meters in terms of their entire wing structure, and they're about double the height. So they are the, one of the smallest eagle species that we get. This is such a beautiful scene that we've been watching. I really enjoyed that. Michael, sorry, just to finish off your question, because I didn't quite. Um, they don't, as far as I know, they don't show a preference for a morph that is the same as them, if that makes sense. So a pale morph will not favor a pale morph. It's just they, they do mate for life. They come together for the breeding season with the same mate that they had the season before. So they are monogamous. But as far as I know, the morph doesn't show any preference for the same one.